beautiful love. The last few months across the world has been one of the most hardest periods in living history with the coronavirus pandemic. And it's just nice to escape and go for a walk. So today, on the 1st of July 2020, I've decided to go for a walk starting at the Art Royal Anchor in Plymouth. Every fascination comes with a price in your heart. The anchor from HMS Art Royal was presented to the Lord Mayor Chancellor Graham Jinks by the Admiral of the Fleet. Lord Hill Norton GCB on behalf of the Admiralty Board so on the 24th of April 1980. HMS Ark Royal was a light aircraft carrier and former flagship of the Royal Navy. She was the third and final vessel of the Invisible class. She was built by Swan and Hunter and launched by them in 1981. Her motto was, Zeal does not rest. The ship was scrapped in Turkey in 2013. I'm now heading south towards Plymouth Hoe and the War Memorials, then Smithens Tower. That you take, the moves that you make in your eyes. Yes, I found the size deep within the lies every night. I see in your eyes what you fantasize all the time I wanna hold you tight and make you see tonight it's alright Cause I've been on holiday As we go up towards the hoe on the left hand side we've got a multi-story hotel which is a four star hotel which keeps changing hands so I won't give you the name of it at the moment and to the right we've got Sir Francis Drake's Bowling Green Said that Sir Francis Drake played balls there before going off with the Armada. Give but looking you into the history of it, it probably wasn't true. I'll give you a better look at these, but I want to concentrate on the walk, so let's go. Give you life in this world. So ahead of us is the War Memorials. The biggest one is dedicated to the Navy or the Commonwealth sailors that died in the First and Second World War. In this world. The word home means high ground and Plymouth Hoe is used for recreation and relaxation as well as casual skateboarding. In August, Plymouth Sand and the Hoe is normally home to the National Firework Championships. And also, in the past, it's been home to the MTV Music Festival that went off for two or three days in the summer. Just ahead of you is Sir Francis Drake's famous bowling alley and to the left is Plymouth Scented Garden where people just go and sit and relax and breathe in the aromas.
To the left of the War Memorial is the famous landmark lighthouse, the Smeaton's Tower. Smeaton's Tower is a memorial to celebrate the civil engineering John Smeaton. John Smeaton also designed the Edison Lighthouse, which is a major step forward in lighthouse design. Smeaton's structure was in use from 1759 to 1877, until the erosion of the ledge that it was built upon. Plymouth Hoe, the high ground, and Plymouth Sound is steeped in history and it's great to spend an afternoon just looking out over Plymouth Sound and reflecting on the history that sailed out from there and look to the future. We're now walking further south towards Plymouth Dome. Across Plymouth Sound you can see Mount Batten, where Lawrence of Arabia had his last posting in the Air Force. It's now a base for outgoing adventure sports and leisure. Plymouth Dome used to be a tourist centre that looked at the history of Plymouth. And for a while it was a restaurant run by the Lake Gary Roads. I'm now heading further west past Plymouth Lido and of course that's been closed all season because of the coronavirus so far. Tinside Lido is a 1935 Art Deco building. When I moved to Plymouth in 1992 it was closed down for a while and it took a few years to get it up and running again. It's a grade 2 listed building that's only open during the summer. It was officially opened on the 2nd of October 1935. The Lido closed in 1992 after losing its popularity, but after a public campaign it opened again in 2005. As we walk further to the west we have Drake's Island. Drake's Island is a nature reserve which is covered in tunnels and been a little fortress in the past. It's had several owners in the past but because of its preservation orders there's very little anyone can do in the way of building on the island. But I believe you can get tourist boats across to it now. We're just approaching Pier 1 restaurant with some of the finest food in the city overlooking the great waterfront.
the right we've got West Hope Park which is a recreational area. Just to the left of me you've got a jetty and pier. They used to have a monument to Sir Francis Chichester, a hero of mine, an adventurer who was diagnosed with ill health and sailed across the world. Single-handed. I remember writing a poem about him when I was at primary school up in Cheshire. I see a boat out on the sea. The sails are white as white can be. As it goes right round the horn, its masts are broken, the sails are torn. Sir Francis Chichis has had no sleep. We fear he could drown in the darkest deep. Then he came into Plymouth Sound, safe and sound, homeward bound. To the crowd surround a hero. In front of us is Drake's Island. It's a 6.5 acre island made up of limestone and volcanic lava with marine limestone from the Devonian period. Plymouth is one of the three main naval bases in the UK and it's the only nuclear repair and refuelling facility for the Royal Navy, the largest Western naval base in Europe. During the controversial Falklands conflict, thousands of people promenaded along this waterfront to see off the naval ships and the small vessels that were the Armada going out across the Atlantic. We're now heading towards Mill Bay Docks and in front of us is Plymouth Lifeboat Station. Just turned onto Great Western Road and to the left is Mill Bay Marine Village.
I'm just heading west now towards Quadrant Wharf and Quadrant Quay, mm -hmm. uh, which is the new upmarket village by Mill Bay Docks. So I'm now turning left into the new housing estate and dropping down to Mobile Docks where Brittany Ferry sails from to Voskov in France and also Santander in Spain when there's no lockdown. Just across the water now, you've got Milby Docks, the home of Brittany Ferries in Plymouth, and also where some cruise liners come in. Brittany Ferries grew in the 1980s with the acquisition of two shipping companies. They joined forces with the Jersey-based company Hunain Renoff and MMD Shipping to create British Channel Island Ferries. Heading slightly north now, I'm heading towards the moorings at Mill Bay where you can find Princess Yachts. And I love sitting there and pretending I'm down in Monte Carlo, watching the boats, the same boats down in Monte Carlo. July 2020 and it's a gorgeous day in Plymouth, so I decided to walk down to um, Tall Point Park from Plymouth City Centre and the Ho taking in uh, Sweetness Tower, the waterfront, and, and now in Mill Bay Docks. Um, and here is where the um, Brittany Ferry sails from when it's in. Um, everything's in almost lockdown at the moment, so uh, let's see where we go. Princess Yachts is a leading British luxury yacht manufacturer which is based in Plymouth. 
selling to millionaires and billionaires across the world. The Rolls Royce and Porsche in boating. On August the 18th, 1914, Sir Ernest Shackleton sailed on endurance from the Mill Bay Docks on the Imperial Transatlantic Expedition, 1914 to 1917. In the next video, we'll be going through Stonehouse to the Royal William Yard and then going down to Devonport to catch the freight to Tall Point. It's a ride Cause I've been on holiday I was talking all the way to you Cause every fascination Comes with a price in your heart And I Give you time Cause I Give you